Okay, so we've got a Z sphere here in the viewport. If you want to know how to uh, draw Z spheres and move them around, then you can find everything you need to know at the Z brush classroom. But for now, I'm going to draw a couple of eyes on my Z sphere, and I'm going to engage symmetry by pressing the X button on my keyboard. And here is my head. All right. Oh, ears. Oops. Now, if I press A on the keyboard and I press polyframe, you'll see the edge loops. I want to be able to have my uh, low poly at a very low level so that I can make big changes later on. So, on the right hand side of my uh, user interface, I'm going to click on Adaptive Skin. Density is 1 and my radial uh, density is 8. OK, if I press A now, you'll see we've got some big diamonds here at the back. And we'll get diamonds pretty much everywhere. So one way to fix that is A. Draw is engaged. Give him, whoops. Give him a little hat. We've, we fixed our diamond problem here. We've still got a five point pole here, but it's, it's acceptable because we can edit that later. All right, now ZBrush has an interface with programs like Max, Maya, Modo, Photoshop, and Cinema. So that's a, a great connection with your uh, favorite modeling uh, and animation application. So we're going to send this now to 3D Max. Subtool. I'm going to hit Make Adaptive Skin. And what that'll do is it'll put a skinned version of my Z-Sphere uh, configuration in the uh, Append uh, menu click on that I get a second entry here the first entry I'll just uh, make that hide that first entry a we're back to our uh, Z spheres uh, and engage the second and this is the skinned version which we're going to send to 3d max all right I'm going to make sure the icon is on just in case and click Go Z. That should open up Max 2012. Everything's looking pretty good. The orientation is good, only one problem, it's extremely small and it's uh, so small that it's fairly unusable in uh, Max, it's, it's not that useful. If, you, um, if your model is uh, too small, in comparison with your, view, uh, with your, uh, uh, your grid and uh, uh, your viewport, you'll get all sorts of weird things like uh, viewport clipping when you zoom in. Um, it'll be unduly sensitive, your, uh, uh, your viewport, your measurements, uh, your sliders uh, will be extremely sensitive and it's just very hard to model. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, f fix that. There's probably other workarounds, but this one works for me. I'm going to delete this little chap here. First I have to select him, I guess. First thing we have to do is go to the customize menu, click on customize, unit setup, and the first dialog uh, we get is going to control the measurements within the viewport, only within the viewport, it has uh, no bearing on exported models or objects. 
you've got uh, two choices metric and uh, feet, feet and inches and where the real magic happens is under system unit setup so you've got one unit of two units of anything will give us the right size for objects in uh, most game engines so if I make a model here, if I make my character 2 meters high in the UDK game engine, it'll be 2 meters high, which is very, very handy. So okie to that, and okie to that. Then I'm going over to my, I go over to my create, um, my create menu, click on box, drag, click and drag. Okay, let's make them gray. Here, uh, on the right hand side, I'm going to configure my box or my template. I want, I want my template to be half a meter wide and half a meter deep. So 0.5, click OK. And you'll see that it defaults straight away to 0.5 meters. 0.5 meters width, and I'm going to change the height to 2 meters. Then I'm going to click next to uh, the dialog to um, deselect it, zoom out, if you don't do that you'll find that when you click somewhere in the viewport that the uh, measurements will follow the mouse for some weird reason. I want my, uh, my template to be exactly in the center so uh, I'm going to enter uh, zero for each of the axis measurements. Oops, okay and I'm going to convert this by right clicking in the viewport convert to editable poly and then open my stack the stack of my box I'm going to engage edges and go to one of my favorite new tools which is the swift loop swift loops great select a polygon at the front I'm going to click insert move tool and it's got a nose and go to the top uh, the top of the stack and engage go Z which is a menu entry right at the top of the uh, max user interface click go Z and we have our template and if all is well it's the size and the orientation that uh, I want my model to be in max. We're not there yet. Uh, with the box selected, I'm going to go back into 3D Max. So, go Z. And you see what happens. Z brushes put the axis at the top of my uh, model. I've got my model not standing on my... Uh, uh, on my perspective grid, I've got it butting up against it. I'm going to select my template and polygon and properties. I'm going to turn it to hard, that's and smoothing is gone. Um, front view. I'm going to move my template up so that the base is on the grid. Well, fairly well on the grid. Click on the hierarchy um, panel and click Effect Pivot, Move Tool, and move my axis, the axis of my template, down to the base. Go back to the Modify panel and move the model so that it's sitting on the grid, perfectly on the grid. Okay, because we've got a nose, our uh, axis is a bit moved back a bit, so I'm going to move it a little bit forward. That's not so important for uh, Y orientation in Max here. What's very important is that uh, it's symmetrical in the X uh, axis. Okay, the, with the top level active, I'm going to go back to Z brush, go Z, go Z brush, and you'll see that my model jumps up. and the grid jumps up to meet it which is great, it's exactly what I want okay, 
I'm going to change the uh, perspective grid here so that it's more like the perspective grid I have in uh, 3D Max. So I'm going to hit the draw menu and I'm going to change the grid size. You'll see that with um, a Wacom tablet, a lot of sliders in um, ZBrush and also other programs are a little too sensitive unless you've got a huge Wacom. So here I'm going to give it a size of about 0.3. And you can change also, you can change the color of your grid there in the uh, draw menu. I'm going to check that this is uh, going to be the right size for um, showing an anti aliased view. So control zero. And if I turn off my light box, you can see that I've got F. Move out a bit. You can see I've got a, a fairly good uh, proportion for a character, set up for a character preview. Okay, um, now it's in the right orientation, the template's in the right orientation, it's the right size because if I send it back, if I send this back to, uh, um, to Max, then you'll see that it's exactly where I want it to be, and it's exactly the size I want it to be also. Okay, so back to ZBrush, and I'm going to use this template more often, and I'm going to save this template as a startup in my uh, Z Projects folder. So if now, if I uh, enter Control S on the keyboard, then I'm going to get a Save Project um, setting, and I'm going to go to my Programs folder, 86 folder, where ZBrush lives. Um, double click on uh, Pixelogic, ZBrush 4, and the Z projects. And I already have a character template saved, you can see it down here. But I'm going to override it with this one because it's got uh, more, more um, preferences uh, in, in the project itself. So click on character template. Save. Do I want to replace it? Yes, I do. All right, and now um, if I double click on this, it's going to ask me, do you want to save this one? Well, no. And here we go. Now I have my template, right orientation, right size, and it's ready to use uh, so that I can um, enter, put in my uh, uh, Z spheres. All right, uh, next part will be um, putting uh, Z sphere configuration using this. Uh, it's a transparent overlay, and uh, then um, tweaking the uh, the Z uh, the Z sphere uh, mesh in uh, 3D Max so that we can uh, use things like uh, symmetry, and so that um, we don't have too many strange uh, anomalies like uh, those uh, five point poles. We're going to try and get rid of those. Thanks for watching, and till the next video.